All right, so it's a, there's a fallacy here. That's why I like the feedback. I can't get you laid. I can't make out with a girl for you. I can't talk to her for you. I can't fuck her for you. You have to do these things. But I can tell you how to make it work. I can tell you the trick that enables me to guarantee to get a one night stand literally whenever I want. I can get one absolutely whenever I want just by walking out my front door and pulling off the techniques that I am going to share with you. In order to know how a one night stand works or a same night lay, we have to understand the difference between them. So what is the difference between a same night lay and a one night stand? Um, I'll, 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 I'll tell you, I'll, I'll break it down so you don't have to write this one in the comments box, but just, just hear me out. A lot of guys like, I want a one night stand, I want a one night stand. I hate one night stands. I'll tell you for a fact, I've had maybe three in my entire life. I don't do one night stands. I same night lay almost everybody. Now, what's the difference? Same night lay means when I first meet them, I take them to bed that evening and I fuck them that evening. One night stand is that I have sex with a girl and then I never fuck her again. Now there's a difference between these two things. See, often people think the one night stand is cool, but one night stand, you may have known the girl for six months, not been able to get laid, got laid once and then she never called you back. Technically that's a one night stand. You had sex once. Same night lay is you meet the girl, have sex with her the same night you meet her, and then if you want, you can continue having sex with her. And that's what I like. I think of it this way. If I'm gonna go through the effort to actually pick up a chick, I wanna know it's not just gonna result in one night of sex. Sex on the first night sucks. Trust me, if you're not having sex often enough, I'm telling you now, sex on the first night fucking sucks. I have some of the best sex of my life right now and it's because I'm with women that I've known for a long time. That's what makes sex great. It's when you know someone, when you're comfortable enough saying exactly what you want and getting exactly what you want. And this is what you're missing out on when you're doing a, a one night stand. So one night stands suck. Forget one night stands, it's all about same night ladies. Make sure you meet a girl, take her home that night. So, in order to understand the psychology of a same night lay, you gotta get into this idea about women. Why um, don't women just wanna go around and have sex with everybody they meet all the time? What, what is holding them back? Because I'll tell you something, psychologically, they do. In fact, women are as horny and think about sex as much as men. There are a whole bunch of studies that have proven this. So if women are as horny as men all the time, what is it holding them back? It's not genetics, it's social. There are social stigmas attached that hold women back from just having sex with anyone. And I'm gonna start off with a little bit of a lecture on how you can stop this from happening. Yes, you, seeing a home have the power. Every time you call a girl a slut, every time you say a girl's a bitch, every time you go, oh my God, that girl will just fuck anybody. Any of these comments, you are adding to the pool of fire that stops women from wanting to have sex. I never talk about women that way. Like literally never talk about women that way. When it comes to women, I try to make sure that I make it very clear to all of them that sex is wonderful, that they should experience it all the time, and they should feel free to have as much sex as they like. In my house, the term slut is actually an endearing term. I call myself a slut. I was like, I'm a fucking slut. I love having sex all the time. Everybody that uh, enjoys having sex should wear the term slut as a badge of honor. We are people that enjoy having sex and we go out and have it and it's enjoyable and it's wonderful. And this is what I'm talking about. It's about spreading this concept because it's that stigma that is holding women back from just going out there and having sex. You think about it. If a guy fucks 10 girls in a week, he's a stud. If a girl fucks 10 guys in a week, she's a slut. If a girl fucks another girl and she's also into guys because she's bisexual, People are like, she's doing it to get attention. She's doing it to get a guy. She's doing it to make herself more attractive. How about she's doing it because she likes having sex? And sure, if she's having sex with this girl gets her that guy, why the fuck not? She likes having sex. There is nothing wrong with doing things to get sex. And so this is the concept you've got to get in your head because this is what stops a girl from having a same night lay. If she believes that she's gonna be called a slut, if she believes that she's gonna be negatively judged, if she believes that she's gonna be left with some kind of STD, or she's gonna be left with a pregnant pregnancy and some kid that you're not gonna look after, she is going to not want to have sex. So based on this, we can analyze the correct foundation that we have to build. We have to build one where she doesn't feel she's a slut. We have to feel, build one where she doesn't feel she's gonna get judged by you or any of her friends. We have to build one that is surrounded with safe sex, and more importantly, one that makes it very clear that um, you are completely clean of STDs. These are the things, the foundation of where this needs to come from. So I want you to hold on to those concepts because we're gonna be revisiting them a little bit later on. 
The thing that makes a girl feel comfortable at having a same night lay is the same thing that makes a girl feel comfortable about cheating. And now you need to understand this because same night lays and cheating, unfortunately, go hand in hand. Now there's a reason for this and the reason is very simple. The only thing that stops a girl from cheating is society. If she likes you, the only reason she won't cheat on you is because she's worried that you will leave her or society will judge her. It's not because she doesn't want to have sex. Think about this. If you're in love with a girl and you're dating a girl and everything's wonderful and your girl said to you, I want you to have sex with other women and it would make me be more attracted to you, which psychologically we know is actually a factor, right? We know that psychologically that's something that triggers girls' attraction. If she said that to you, then I think 99% of guys in the planet would go and do it. Right? Let me know. Let me know what you think about this. Let's see if anybody disagrees with me. Right? You're with a girl. She loves you. And she says, I want, I want you to have sex with somebody else because it will make me be more attractive to you. Would you do it? So I want you to, to be 100% honest here. Let's see if anybody says no. If you say yes, say yes. I want to see a bunch of yeses. Uh, but let's see if anybody says no. And if you say no, give me a reason why you wouldn't. Um, and let's see what comes in, JR, so as that goes through. So uh, there's a bit of a delay, so I'm going to move on a little bit, but we'll come back to this. So, uh, Okay, so if you think about it this way, for a girl to feel comfortable having a same night lay, she's gotta be in that environment where she doesn't feel she's gonna be judged. And like I said, unfortunately it goes hand in hand with that cheating concept, because essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to make pleasure, we're trying to make pleasure the most important factor. Pleasure, the one thing that she truly needs to be focused on that night. And now, believe it or not, um, there is a time of the month when a girl is most likely to cheat, a time when she is most likely to want to do something just for sex. Um, let, let's pause that just for a second. Do we have anyone said no? Yeah, oh, uh, just one person, but they didn't say There you go, only one. So first of all, like I said, 99% guys is gonna say yes, right? 99% guys are gonna agree. We had one person that said no, they wouldn't cheat, even if their girlfriend said they wanted them to because it'll make her like him more. What was his reason? He didn't give a reason. He didn't give a reason. Oh, one person said no because she's testing you. No, because she's testing you. What if it wasn't a test? So to that one guy, what if it wasn't a test? What if you knew it was real? What if it wasn't a test, if it's 100% real, she said to you, I want you to do it. She does want you to. Like, we can go in ahead and we can find out this is accurate. She wants you to. Would you do it? That's, that, see how that changes things, right? Because if you know this is what they want, then they're okay with it. And that's the point. A girl is exactly the same, right? She is gonna be okay cheating, providing she knows you're okay with it. Knows that um, you don't mind her going and fucking somebody else. Now, you might say, uh, well, I don't want that. I don't want her to cheat. And believe it or not, you're correct. Men don't want women to cheat. Women don't like the idea of their guy cheating, but typically, they're a little bit more okay with it. And I know this sounds crazy because society says otherwise, but from a biological point of view, women are much more inclined to share a male than men to share a woman. Why is this? I'll break it down genetically, right? Fuck society just genetically, it's very simple. If you have sex with a girl and she has a kid, it's her kid. It might be yours, but it is hers. Because she gave birth to it, she knows it's got her genetic code. As a male, we never know. One female with three guys, none of us know who the kid is without doing DNA testing. At a genetic level, we don't know which, which one of us created the child. But she knows it's hers. This is why a woman is much more inclined on a genetic level to be okay with cheating. Because if there are three women and you're dating three women, as long as she gets pregnant, you've done your job from a genetic point of view. It doesn't matter if you're fucking two or three of them, you've got enough sperm to go around, you can impregnate a whole bunch of people. This is why, from a society point of view, cheating is an issue. But biologically, women are very okay sharing. Women are fine, like fine, biologically. Their bodies don't react negatively to it. In fact, what happens is when you get multiple women for a male, um, they don't typically compete on an aggressive level uh, gen uh, genetically. Males will compete genetically. So what I mean by this is, if you've got three guys competing for a female, the male will start getting aggressive, um, his blood will start rushing, his testosterone will build up, um, and if you just put three males in the same house and they don't even have to compete for a girl, there's one girl and three guys, either the three guys will just get on together and everything will be fine, or there'll be strong competition and aggression between the males. So we're talking about roommates here, right? They're not even dating. There's just one female, three males. The males will either get on and everything's fine, or there'll be very strong, aggressive competition, constantly trying to outdo each other. If you put three females in a house with one male, that doesn't happen. 
right? They don't get aggressive. They don't fight over the guy. That isn't what goes down. If they're just roommates, what happens? We know one thing that happens if you put all women together. Their periods align, right? You've heard this before. All their periods become in sync. Well, newsflash, periods don't sync up. That doesn't actually happen. You're like, no, I know it happens. Like, my friends say it happened. It's definitely a thing. I've, I've seen it before. It's real. Periods don't sync up. And this could be an incredibly important reason for you to understand because it's going to be the key to getting same night lays. And I know I'm, I'm giving you a genetic lesson here, but this is important and you need to understand it. It's not periods that sync up. It's ovulating that syncs up. What I mean by that is a period is the result of a failed pregnancy, right? Basically, she didn't get pregnant. So an egg moves into her uterus, you have sex with her, the egg gets impregnated and the baby comes out. And if you don't impregnate the egg, the egg is aborted. And so that unfertilized egg is what a period is. You got it? So you understand this? So it's not that the periods are aligning, it's that the ovulation is aligning. Why? Because they're competing for the male sexually. See the difference? Men aren't increasing their sperm count. Men aren't, you know, having some kind of genetic need to have more sex. They always need to have more sex. That isn't changing. What changes amongst men is aggression because we need to know the female is ours. From a female point of view, she just needs to make sure she gets pregnant first. It's not, it, it's not about removing the other women. It's just about making sure that she's also capable of having sex. So their ovulation periods align so that all of them are pregnant, can get pregnant at the same time. So you can knock out sex with all of them and get them all completely ready. I know this sounds crazy, but it's important for you to know this because ovulation is the time when a woman is most likely to cheat on her partner. You see, again, let's go back into the genetic code. Let's just imagine that you and her have been dating for two years and she's not pregnant yet. And she's not pregnant yet because you don't want kids. So you use a condom. You do everything you can to make sure that this girl doesn't have kids. She doesn't want kids. You both don't want kids. And yet, for one week of the month, when she's ovulating, you've probably noticed, people are like, when she's on her period, she gets grumpy. I'm going to say that's not exactly true. Tell me if you've noticed this. If you've dated a girl, tell me if you've noticed she actually gets grumpy the week before the period. Not the week of the period. The week of the period, she's all mopey and sad and lonely. But the week before, that's when she gets her attitude, right? So let's see, let's see how many people have noticed this because this is something that I, I think a lot of people may have actually seen and noticed. So if you've noticed that the beginning of the period or just before, well, before the period is when she actually starts getting grumpy and then during the period, she just has cramps and has headaches and feels bad. Tell me if you've noticed this. This is important. We'll talk about it. It's because the week before the period is the time when she's ovulating. That's the time when her body is getting her ready to have sex. Why? Because there's an egg in her uterus ready to fucking go. She's horny and she's ready for sex. Um, are we getting people that have said they've yeah. noticed this? Yeah, we got 100% true. True, right? The week before. You know why? She's grumpy that week because she's trying to start a fight with you at a genetic level because she wants to cheat. Because you've been with her for two years and you haven't impregnated her. So genetically, her body's like, there's something wrong with this guy. Fuck this guy. I don't want this guy anymore. I'm going to go fuck somebody else. Fuck this guy. I'm going to go and have sex with somebody else, and I'm going to get fucking pregnant. She doesn't want to. So she's in conflict. She's upset at herself. She's upset at you. She's upset. She doesn't know why. It's because genetically, she's failing. And unlike men, she has a limited number of eggs, right? At a certain point, the eggs run out. There's no more eggs. And at that point, it's over for her. It's different for you. A sp you can generate sperm all the time. She can't. She's got a limited number of eggs. Every egg wasted is another upset, another time she's pissed off. And so that aggression comes out and she goes out to go and cheat. Now, this is the benefit because we're not talking about how to get a girlfriend, right? We're talking about how to get a same night lay. So what that means is this girl is out. She's on the town and she needs to get laid. So word on ethics here. If you're sitting here in this class, you need to give up on this whole, I don't have sex with girls with boyfriends. The good news is you won't know because they don't typically go around and be like, oh yeah, I've got a boyfriend. When they're ovulating, they're fucking single. A girl's night, think about it. What's a girl's night? A girl's night is a time we leave our guys at home so we can go out to a club with a bunch of girls and meet new guys. It's not a girl's night. It's a different guy night. It's not you night. It's other guys, right? This is what they're doing. They go out with girls so they can flirt with men. Why? Usually because they're ovulating. You can map it out. The week before she has her period, more girls nights than any other time of the fucking year. 
That's because this is the point when genetically she's ready for it. So your best chance to get a girl is during this moment. So you gotta learn to go out there and spot the girls that are ovulating. Because the ones that are ovulating, they want sex then. They don't want it next week. Next week's no good. Next week's shark week. They want it then. Right now at that point. Is everybody with me at this, JR? Are they all people following? Let's get, a, let's get a thing. If you're following me, if you understand what I'm saying, if you see why this is important and how this could actually be the key to you getting same night lays, then uh, let me know. Let's get some focus here. Hmm. <coughs> Sorry guys, got a bit of plastic in my bottle. That's funny. All right, just drank a bit of plastic, that was weird. So, um, I taught this technique to a buddy of mine who's in the special forces. Now, I've had a bunch of uh, soldiers, a bunch of military guys that come and train with me. And you know, it makes sense if you think about it. They've been away for a long time. Um, those that aren't married, aren't settled down, they come back and they're like, shit, I've missed this whole dating game. What do I do? How do I get into it? And so they come to me and I guide them throughout to do it. When I taught this special forces guy, this technique I'm gonna share with you, he was like, dude, this is the best thing I've ever heard. He said, basically, I don't have to learn how to meet girls. I don't have to learn how to hold down a relationship. I can just use this, go out, meet girls who wanna have sex, and then just fuck them. He had a really simple technique. He would go into an area that had like five or six bars, walk into a bar, walk around the club, use the technique that I'm gonna share with you. If he couldn't spot a girl that was ovulating, he would leave within 12 minutes, go next door, go in the next club and do it again. He'd do this like seven times in a row until he found a girl that was hot enough and that was ovulating. He'd pick her up, take her home and fuck her that night. It was like insane how powerful this technique was for him. And I'd never seen somebody optimize it that well. You know, typically guys are like, oh, I'm gonna go out tonight, I'm gonna have fun with my mates. They go out, they see a girl that's off, and go, oh, I'll pick this one up. This guy would actively be like, no, I'm gonna go out there and do it. One night he did it twice in the same night. He went out, went out, got this chick, brought her back, had sex with her, and then went out again, got another one, came back and had sex with her. I had another student of mine who actually became one of my instructors after a while, and he went out to a club to use this technique, um, picked up a girl, um, brought her back to help him fuck a girl that he'd brought home a week earlier. So the story goes like this, he went out a week earlier, met this girl, brings her back and she's not really that into sex, he's not sure what to do. So he's like, fuck, um, you know, I've got to do something and she said she's always wanted a threesome. So he's like, well if I could make a threesome happen, I know I could have sex, because she's got like bisexual tendencies or whatever. And he's like, you know what, I'm gonna go and get a girl. And she's like, what? And he goes, go grab a shower, by the time you get back, I'll have a girl. She's like, no fucking way. She jumps in the shower, he leaves, goes next door, picks a girl up, using this technique, brings her back for a threesome. So this is the kind of skill that we're talking about here. This is like a very powerful thing it works incredibly well and so I'm gonna take you through exactly how to spot girls that are ovulating but as you can as I explained to you and as you can probably see by now you need to understand why this is important you need to understand how this works um, JR everyone's saying they're following me they're all with me on this oh, yeah, for sure. any confusion is anyone like shit I don't know what's it I'm gonna drink water again and hope not to eat plastic again that's horrible all right anyone confused anyone not sure all right, good. Good, this is great. Okay, so I know I can continue. So, it's all based on genetics, right? Genetics is the entire thing that we're looking for here. What we're looking for is specifically understanding what she goes for when she's ovulating. Now, this is the bit that's gonna blow your mind. When she's ovulating, she's not necessarily looking for the richest, biggest, scariest, most alpha, good-looking guy. She wants the opposite of whatever she's currently got. So again, we're gonna go back into the mindset, right? Her mindset, or genetic mindset, I suppose, not actually a mindset. Genetically, what she's got isn't doing anything. So if she's dating some big, built, jock, rich guy, she's gonna cheat with somebody opposite because she wants to get impregnated. You see, you see what I'm saying here? You see how powerful this is? So the hotter her boyfriend is, the more likely she is to go for somebody who isn't that. So, and that's where guys get wrong. Like, and you, you may have seen it yourself. You'd be like, you're with a girl and she cheated and you're like, this guy's nothing like me. The fuck's happening? Why did she, why did she cheat on me with this guy? He's a fucking pleb. This guy's nothing like me. It's because he's the opposite of you. You failed to get her pregnant. I know you didn't want to get her pregnant. I know it wasn't the idea, but because you didn't, she's now gonna cheat with the exact opposite of who you are. She's gonna cheat with, if you're some big ripped blonde guy, she's gonna cheat on you with some short, awkward Mexican guy. Like that's just how it's gonna go down. It's gonna be someone completely different. Someone you would never think of. 
But for you watching this, that's easy because that means if you're not like that really big, rich, super cool guy, this is your best chance to do it because you pull this off and it works. It just, it just works every time. And so the psychology of it makes sense, the genetics of it makes sense. Um, and now I'm gonna explain why it's okay to do it even if she's got a boyfriend. And this is, this is the hard thing to understand. Um, it's not your place to decide whether she should or shouldn't cheat on her boyfriend. That's her decision. We spoke at the beginning about social etiquette, what is acceptable, what isn't acceptable. It's not okay for you to judge whether she can or can't cheat on her boyfriend. What if her boyfriend's beating her? What if she's about to break up with her boyfriend anyway? What if her boyfriend is somebody who is incredibly degradatory, uh, 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 degradatory, degraded, what's that word, JR? There is being degrad, I've lost the word. If somebody knows it, write it in the chat. Um, but somebody who is degrading to her friends or somebody who makes her feel bad or puts her down, ruins her, her ego, you know, makes her just feel like a horrible person. Th maybe she shouldn't be with her boyfriend, but you also shouldn't try and make her cheat. This is the other mistake that guys make. They're like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna get this bitch to cheat. Or yeah, I'm gonna make her cheat in her boyfriend. No, that's not the purpose. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if she's got a boyfriend. Doesn't matter if she doesn't have a boyfriend. It's not your job to say what she should and shouldn't do. Your job is very simple. Your job is to identify a girl who is ovulating and wants to have sex that night. Don't discuss whether she does or doesn't have a boyfriend. Don't identify it. If she doesn't bring it up, just keep gaming, take her home, have sex with her, treat her well, and then stay in touch afterwards, and then you can work out what's gonna go on after that point. If she does bring up the boyfriend beforehand, then that's the point you say, hey, you know what? Um, I totally understand you got a relationship. Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a move. I'm gonna leave you to it. It's wonderful meeting you. And you just back off. Then if she's like, you know what? I don't like my boyfriend anyway. I'm gonna sleep with you. Then you can make your own social call. You can choose whether you wanna do it at that point. But don't bring it up. Don't be like, I've gotta find out if this girl has a boyfriend. You don't. That's not your job. You don't have to do it. Ethically, it's not up to you to decide. It's up to her. It's up to her to tell you if she has one, not for you to ask, not for you to bring it up. Let her deal with that. So. And, and you know, and realistically, hot girls have boyfriends. That's just how it is. Like, I, uh, I used to date this incredibly beautiful girl. She was like this, she used to be a, a model for, for a big modeling agency. And uh, whenever we hung out, I'd said to her, I'd be like, uh, hey, I'm not gonna be dumb enough to assume I'm the only guy you're seeing right now, but do you have an actual boyfriend? And she says, look, she's like, I don't have a boyfriend, but I have five guys that would be upset to hear me say that. And that's the point, right? She doesn't consider any of them a boyfriend, but there's a bunch of guys that she's having sex with because that's what hot girls do, they have sex with people. And you can be one of those guys, but you can be the one that doesn't get upset about it like I was, and that's what made her want to date me. That's what made her ask me to be her boyfriend because I didn't care, I was chill about it. I was like, whatever, I don't care that there's other guys. So it's okay. So now my question is, do you want to know how to spot girls that are ovulating? Is that interesting to you? Do you see how you can use that? Because if you can see a girl who's ovulating, then all you have to do is lead her into a situation where you can have sex with her. Do you see this? Do you see how powerful this is? If you want to learn it, let me know. I want to see what people are saying. Yeah, someone asked you that like 20 minutes ago, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I love Jay. like, uh, somebody's already asked you this, dude, like 20 minutes ago. Good, all right. So how can we spot a girl who is ovulating? Well. What is the purpose of ovulation? It's to put an egg in place to get impregnated. What does impregnated mean? It means you fuck her, right? That is the whole purpose of ovulation is for you to fuck her or for somebody to fuck her and ideally that person's you. So now we know that's the purpose. Now we know that is the goal. We've got to look for somebody who looks like they want to get fucked. And this is very, very simple because somebody who wants to get fucked is horny and agitated. So what I mean by that, is they've got this nervous energy around them that is very sexual. So you can see it, right? I want you to imagine you've got two girls are sitting in a bar and they're talking to each other like this. They're not horny. Nothing about them. They're just two girls chatting. They are on the other three weeks of the month, not the week where they are actually ovulating. That's not what's going down. No. Girls that are ovulating are looking around the room. They're not looking at their friends. They don't hold eye contact with their friends. Why? Because that doesn't help them. They know their friends. They don't want to fuck their friends. They've known their friends for months. Their friends haven't got them pregnant. They're looking around the room. Who can I fuck? And that's why you want to look for them. And you're looking for girls that are looking around the room. So look, notice, look around the room. That's the first point. Who here, you make a checklist. Actually, everyone here should take it, make a checklist. Look around the room. Who is looking around the room? Just like you are. And that's what happens. People look and then boom, you lock eye contact and then they smile, and then they'll look away again because they don't want to be judged socially, right? That's the point, so they look away. That doesn't mean they didn't like you. It means they're being coy. It means they're hiding the fact. Like how many times has this happened to you and you didn't do anything about it? She looked eye contact, she looked away, and you're like, oh, she doesn't want me. You're wrong. She's ovulating. You're supposed to do something about that. 
What happens? Well, she wants to have sex. She can't have sex with a guy that isn't going to initiate. She doesn't have time for that shit. She's got to find somebody who wants it. Someone's going to initiate. So that's your job. You then move up. You go and talk to her. What else are we looking for? How else can we know? That's not enough. You might be saying to me, Adam, it's not enough. I need to know more. I need to know. Well, there's another thing you can tell. Get a group of girls. Look at the one that's dancing to the music earlier. Music is sensual. Music is seductive. We've spoken in previous talks about how the inner ear bones are actually vibrating on sound, but that used to be a form of touch when we were in reptiles. Those three bones that make up the inner ear were part of the jaw. Sound is very seductive. It's like being touched. Music, one of the most seductive things of all. So listening to music and watching her move, especially if her eyes glaze over, if she's moving to the music and the movements are sexual rather than like... If she's doing this, not so much. But if the movements are sexual, then she's probably ovulating as well. So we are two signs now. She's not looking at a friend. She's looking around the room and she's moving. But these two things do need to go together, right? If you see a girl that's just like dancing and having fun, but she's talking to a friend, she's not ovulating. Or very unlikely to be. So we need someone who's looking around the room. She's ovulating. She's also uh, gyrating her hips. She's moving. She's dancing. These are two key elements. Now thirdly, the last one, the most important one of all, when you... Yeah. Do you approach her right away? Uh, if, good question. Do you approach her right away? I'm, and that's why I'm glad. I'm glad people are doing this. I'm glad we can get involved. Yes. You get that eye contact. I smile. If I get any smile, even if she looks away, I approach. I walk straight up to her. And this brings us up to that third point, right? That third point is so important. When I approach, she's receptive. This is the biggest one of all. So the military guy I told you about, it was very simple. He'd walk into a bar, he'd walk around, look for girls that are looking around. Then he'd say, are they dancing? So he'd see a girl that's looking around and she's dancing. Great. He'd go straight up to her and he'd be like, he, uh, he'd literally walk up. I can't use his real name actually for legal reasons, but uh, we'll just say his name's Mark. He'd walk up to her and go, hi, I'm Mark. That was it. That was his fucking line. He has a deep voice. He's a big fucking dude. Hi, I'm Mark. And he goes like, oh my God, hi. If she's locking eye contact, smiling and very receptive, boom, he knows it can work. Why? Because yes, tall, big, good looking, ripped military Mark got fucking rejected by girls. Because if they weren't ovulating, they didn't care. They're like, uh, I've got a boyfriend, thank you. He gets that response as well. Everyone gets that fucking response. If she's got a boyfriend and she's not ovulating, you get that response. But if you walk up, confident, smile, lock eye contact, move straight in. Hi, I'm Adam. Then she's going to be like, oh my God, hi. That's how you know she's ovulating. She's receptive. Other things I look for, if I tell a really bad joke and she's like, oh my God, you're so funny. And the joke isn't funny. I literally have a group of these jokes, of not funny jokes I can tell people. And if they laugh and they go, wow, that's really funny, then I know that it's on. So for example, I'll be talking to her. And you know, again, I'm, I'm being cool, right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna fuck somebody with the ovulate, you need to be cool. So I'll be sitting there, I'll be like, you know what's really funny? One of my friends actually told me a joke earlier on today. And I didn't know whether I wanted to kill him because it was the worst joke I've ever heard or whether it was actually pretty funny. And the guy's like, oh my God, what's the joke? I'm not gonna ruin this by telling you now. You're awesome and you're cute and I, I can't stop staring at your butt. So there's a lot of physical compliments I'm giving. And this is important, right? Because she's ovulating. It's okay to do this. I'm not just like, you're hot. It's like, you know what? And you're kind of cute. I'm not saying you are this. It's like, well, you're kind of this. But I, you know, I can't stop staring at your butt. I'm giving very physical compliments. Like, I can't stop staring. Not, you have the best butt I've ever seen. Not a good phrase to say. The best butt I've ever seen says that she's the best girl. She knows it's bullshit. I can't stop staring at your butt. It's a fact. And then if she reacts well to that, you know she's ovulating. Anytime you do something that's typically inappropriate, but she's okay with it, you know she's ovulating. But don't start with that shit. Start by just introducing yourself with your name and seeing how she reacts. For those of you guys that want to know the joke, at this point, because I haven't told it to her, you see what I did there? I said I've got this joke, but I don't say what it is. She gets curious. I look for those signs. Does she remember? If she brings this up and she says, what's that joke? I say, well, okay, what's orange but sounds just like a parrot? And she'll think about it and go, I don't know. And I'll be like, a carrot. It's not funny. It's really not funny. But if she's like, oh my God, that's so funny, she's ovulating. Why? Because her body is flooded with oxytocin and oxytocin is triggered by humor. So the tiniest joke is really fucking funny when you are flooded with oxytocin because you need to have sex. So I can test it with a really lame joke and see what happens. So if I see all these signs, I know the girl is ovulating. Does this make sense? Is this enough? Are you guys like, okay, I've got it. Let me know. Let me know if you've got this, because if you do, I'm going to tell you what to do to guarantee to get laid. You could go out tonight. You could literally leave this, go out tonight, find a girl that's ovulating, and fuck her within 24 hours. Like, it's possible if you can go through and do these things. Does everyone understand? Yes, yes. Probably. Good. This is great. I lo love this. If anyone doesn't, please let me know. Another key fact, if you're going to make this work, then you have to be 
clean. And I mean this genuinely. There's no girl in the world that wants to stick her head between your dick, uh, between your legs and suck your dick if your pubes are hairy and wiry and everywhere and you haven't trimmed them or you haven't bathed. Like bad smell is gonna put a girl off because if she smells you and it doesn't smell good, she's not gonna to wanna to breed with you because genetics are important. And she needs to know that her kid can look after itself. And a kid being able to look after itself, they assume is because the male looks after itself. Remember, you're gonna be judged on your genetics. You don't have to be good looking, you have to look good. That means you need to bathe, you need to get your hair cut, you need to trim your beard, do whatever the fuck you need to do to make yourself look as good as possible. How should you dress? Like everyone in GQ. Your Star Wars t-shirt doesn't cut it. I don't care if the movie's coming out soon. It doesn't work. If you're gonna get laid on a one night stand or a same night lay, you need to look like you just walked out of GQ. Get your head on nicely, wear a suit. It's even better. If you're a big guy, like if you're a bit big and fat, wear a black waistcoat, wear a white shirt that's very slimming as a style, and just think like, look like a bouncer from like the 1920s. A nice pinstriped suit with a, a, you know, with a waistcoat and a shirt and everything's crisp. Um, don't wear a fedora. Get your hair done. If you're balding, shave it off. You wanna look like you walked out the pages of GQ. That is exactly the goal. If you don't know what that looks like, just get a friend to go through, like a female friend ideally, or your mom or any girl you know, and be like, hey, what can I do to style myself like this? Don't wanna look like that. You don't need to look like Brad Pitt. You need to be styled as if you walked off the pages of GQ. When you combine that with everything I just said, you're literally just gonna be walking into sex. Um, JR, anyone not understand? Is everyone with this? No, everyone's on board with you. Good, everyone's got it, this is great. All right, I'm gonna move on. I got two more things. I'm gonna tell you two things. I wanna make sure that you guys wanna hear this. One. I'm gonna explain how to lead the situation sex. And two, if you're interested, I'm gonna explain, um, is, there's a link beneath this video, right? I just wanna make sure. There's a link beneath, beneath this video that's gonna to explain to you what to do if when you meet a girl, she's not ovulating, but you wanna put her into that mindset. Because if you think about it, right, there's four weeks in the month, only one of those weeks is she ovulating. That means, you know, you got a one in four chance of actually having sex with a girl on the same night. There is a technique that a very good friend of mine teaches that breaks down how to get a girl, if she's in one of those other three weeks, into the same mindset, the hot zone as he calls it, as a girl who is down for a same night lay. So I want you to just think about that. You could, if you want, at the end of this, learn how to get the other girls to have that same mindset. It is possible, it's crazy, but it's something that can be done. And I'm gonna tell you about that after this. So, if it's something you care about, I don't know if it's something, if you want, let me know. So how to lead the situation. So I'm talking to her and I've tested. All right, this girl is ovulating. I know the situation's there. I know it's all set up. Now this is the key. Because of the social situation, the stuff we spoke about at the beginning, you cannot make this about sex. Even though it's sexual, even though it's sexually charged, you can't be like, hey, so uh, let's go to my, back to my place and bone. That doesn't work. The minute you say that, you trip every social alarm she has. My friends are gonna think I'm a slut. Um, I'm gonna have sex and cheat on my boyfriend. Oh my God, he's never gonna call me again. Uh, this guy's gonna judge me. I'm gonna get pregnant and I'm gonna die, right? You can't trip any of those wires. This needs to be fluid, it needs to be natural, and more importantly, she needs to justify to her friends the next day why she went home with you. And she's never gonna say, I had an egg drop and so I was ovulating so I wanted to fuck somebody else. That's not gonna be the reason. No one says that as the reason, right? You believe me? Do you, if you believe me, say yes, you believe me, right? No one's gonna say that. So because she's not gonna say that, you can't use that as your reason to bring her home. You can't be like, we're going back to my place to fuck. And she's like, I went back to his place to fuck. You can't do that because it's not in her mind to do this. You need to give her a reason. Everything has to have a reason. So it's very simple. For me, it's easy. I'll be hanging out with her and I'll be like, hey, do you wanna grab some food? I'm starving. I am starving, do you want food? Not, hey, why don't we get some food together? Because you haven't explained what you want and you're being an alpha right now. An alpha does things for himself. The, pred, the, the lionesses, the female lions, go out, get the food, bring it back. The male eats first. Same thing here. I'm hungry. Do you wanna come with me and grab some food? You give her an option. Now bear in mind, she laughed at a not funny joke. She was receptive to a non-pickup line. She's been receptive to everything you've done. She's gonna be receptive to going out and eating with you. So you're like, I'm gonna go get some food, come with me. Or do you wanna come with me? Come with me is even better than saying, do you wanna come with me, by the way. If you've got the testicles to do it, you should do it. And then you take her and you go and get food. And then while you're having food, this is the best thing of all. You're like, oh my God, I forgot. I need to insert the thing you need to do at your house here. 
So, oh my God, I forgot, I need to feed my cats. My place is just around the corner. Do you mind coming with me? I'm gonna feed my cats. We can come straight back here and grab dessert. We can go straight back to the club or we can go somewhere else. So you're letting her know we're not staying at my place. We're just gonna go there, do a thing, and then we're gonna leave. Um, oh my God, I forgot I, grabbed my I forgot my jacket, it's getting cold. Oh my God, I forgot I have to send an email. Oh my God, I forgot there's a video that I have to leave rendering. Oh my God, I forgot I left the tap on. Oh my God, I forgot I have to go and record a TV show. Oh my God, I forgot I've got to let my roommate in. Whatever your excuse is, it doesn't matter. There needs to be an, oh my God, I forgot, and then you go home with her. And she's coming with you to keep you company. The first time that I typically used to bring girls back when I lived in London, I'd be like, hey, uh, I'd drive them somewhere on my bike, and then I'd be like, shit, I've forgotten something back at my place. Hey, I don't wanna leave you here. Come with me on my bike, and I'll drop you off at your place afterwards. Then when you come in the house, take your sweet ass time. Don't just do it. Be like, hey, do you want a drink? Let me get you a drink. Pour them a glass of champagne. You sit them down with some champagne. Oh my God, you know, I don't wanna leave you bored. Let me put some videos on YouTube. Check this out. I got some really funny videos to show you. Show me your favorite playlist on YouTube. You know what works really well? Build a YouTube playlist of like 50 videos that are fun to sit down and watch. Silly cat videos. If you guys see cats and cucumbers, that's great. Just a whole bunch of funny videos that you can leave up to keep her, to keep her watching. Why funny? Why is funny what we're after? Oxytocin. It can be funny or it can be sexy. These are the two options you have when she's ovulating. That's it. Nothing serious, nothing depressing. Don't show her politics. You don't get her head out of that space. It's oxytocin. It's funny or it's sexy. You go and do the chore, then you come back, you sit with her, and you watch the thing together. If she's enjoying it, she's gonna be like, hey, I'm having fun. You don't need to say, do you wanna leave? Do you wanna go back? Do you wanna stay here? You don't need to ask her. You just sit next to her and you hold her. You touch her physically. If she's receptive and she leans into you, kiss her on the side of the forehead. If she's receptive for that, make out with her. If she's receptive for that, hold her hand, walk her into the bedroom, lie her on the bed, stick your head between her legs, start going down on her until she's turned on. Tell her she's not allowed to come. She's gonna say why. And you say, because I don't know if you deserve it yet. She's gonna like, oh my God, I'll show you how much I deserve it. She's gonna suck your dick to prove a point, And then the two of you are having sex. It's that easy. It's almost guaranteed. I could literally walk out of my house and I could know that by this evening, somebody would be sucking my dick and somebody would be getting fucked. This technique will work for you. You just have to do it. But if you want to increase your chances, if you want to increase your odds of actually making this work, then there is a way that you can get every girl to move into the same mindset. Uh, I'm not gonna explain it myself, my good buddy Brad P, he's another guy who was voted number one dating coach in the world around the same time that I was or just after me. Um, if you're interested, if you wanna learn, then you just have to click the link beneath this video and he will explain all about the hot zones and all about how you can get a girl into this mindset even if she isn't ovulating. So if you wanna get not just 25% of girls, but 100% of girls, just click on the link and check it out. Um, and now, having said that, any questions did we get in? Let's do like three questions. Okay, cool. So what if you have a girlfriend and you don't want her to cheat on you while she's ovulating? What if you have a girlfriend and you don't want her to cheat on you while she's ovulating? This, we're gonna cover in a different video. We're gonna talk about how to manage a relationship and how to make sure it happens. There's lots of different techniques that you can do. Um, one of the biggest ones that I do is I make sure I know where my girl's periods are, and the week before their periods is awesome week. We do fun things, the things that girls enjoy. For example, uh, one of my girlfriends, um, she's on her period right now. Uh, my girlfriends have got to a point where they're out of sync, actually, funny enough, because we've been together for so long that now their periods move in and out of sync, and that's because one of them has it regulated by the pill, and the other one doesn't have it regulated by the pill because she has uh, a different method to, of, um, of birth control. So because of that, their periods often do move out of sync. Um, and so the one who was just about to go on a period, we just went to San Diego for three days together. Um, and the two of us just had a crazy time of having awesome sex, specifically because I wanted to make sure that I was fulfilling her needs at that point. Cool, next question. Yeah, does this work with girls you already have known for a while? Girls who have you, girls who have in the friend zone? Does it work with girls in the friend zone? Not as well. If you want to get out of the friend zone, then you need to use a friend zone technique. I believe there was another seminar on that recently. If you didn't see that one, then you're probably missing out. You might still be able to get access to it um, by emailing in. You can just like reply to the email that we send the stuff out from and somebody might be able to give you access to it. If not, you could request it as a future video. Uh, but the friend zone, I mean, that's a whole, uh, literally a whole seminar on its own. Cool, next question. Yeah, my best friend is watching this with me and wants to ask this question due to Charlie Sheen. He wants to know if he should continue with the same night late if he's asking her if she took an STD test. Okay, wait, so his friend's watching this, and what was that about Charlie Sheen? I missed half what you said. Yeah, um, you're watching this regarding Charlie Sheen. I was watching it, okay, and in regarding Char Charlie Sheen, go for it. Wants to know should you still have a same night late? If he's asking if she 
Okay, basically, what do you do about STD tests? So here's the thing. Number one, always wrap up. You always use a condom the first time you have sex, guaranteed. Even so, there are still some STDs you can get even if you use a condom. And the easiest way to spot those is look for it. This is why the first time I have sex with a girl, I go down on her. The reason I'm going down on her isn't to give her pleasure, although it is. The reason I'm going down on her is because I want to check the area and make sure it looks okay. If it doesn't look okay, or it smells funny, because that's the thing about a female body, you can smell a difference. Bacteria has a smell to it, and if she's got an infection or there's something you can catch, you'll smell it. At which point you can come straight back up, and then you can just go back to just hugging her, and if she's like, hey, what's wrong? You just be like, hey, you know what? I realized we just met each other. We don't even know each other yet. Um, and then you can just calm everything down, and you do not want to have sex with that girl, especially not that night. Cool, next question. Can you eat pussy when she's ovulating? Can you eat pussy when she's ovulating? No, that's period. That's not the, this, not the same. You ovulate before your period. So, okay, so um, she, the egg gets in permission, into position, and then afterwards, that's when the egg comes out. Okay, so when she's turned on and she's ready to have sex, which is the week before the period, is when it's totally okay to go down on her. Then, once the period happens, that's when the blood comes out. At that point, it's too late. At that point, you're not supposed to be having sex. There's a difference in those two things. Yeah. How does all this approach to day game cold approach? How does this approach, the day game cold approach is exactly the same. You walk out, you look, you spot the girl that's ovulating, use the same technique. Uh, notice that I didn't mention whether it was in a bar, it doesn't matter. You can do it literally anywhere. You could do it in a bar, you could do it during the day. The techniques are exactly the same. You meet her in a coffee shop, in a Whole Foods, techniques the same. Yeah, when will the next Q&A be? When will the next Q&A be? Um, again, I'm not sure when they're scheduling the next official Q&A. If you're interested, just email into the company. Um, you can reply back to the Dawa Badass um, and they can go through and let you know if there's going to be a Q&A. But it's typically by demand. I know a lot of people um, are getting their Q&As because they've signed up to do private coaching with us now. Um, and I know the Q&A was a big push to just try and get more people to come and do that. Because typically when we do those detailed Q&As, there are people that have signed up to come and do live training with me and my team. Um, but if you message in, I'm sure they might be able to do another one at some point in the future. Um, for those of you guys that are curious about um, how to trigger this on other weeks, please make sure you click on the link beneath this video. It's there right now. I'm going to bounce out, so now is a really good time to do it. Click on the link and you know at least listen to the first minute and see exactly what, um, what Brad's talking about. Brad's a very cool guy, and you know this could be the difference. You could go out tonight, not see anyone that's, that's you know, ready and, and turned on and ready to have sex, um, and then you could just use this. And you can be like, oh, I can make it happen. So click on the link and at least find out what it's about. And uh, I'll see you guys uh, in the next video, I suppose. Thanks ever so much for watching. Chat